Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now this is going to be a technique. Technique, exercise, so just like something you can do, um, which means I'm not going to be talking for ages and ages and ages. Although I probably will do one of those recordings <laughs> later on and uh, hopefully do a, a, a longer relaxation session. So this, I think yesterday I did a Ringo Ringo star thing like it's really kind of drumming on your on your knees this is going to be something very different and oh there it is okay this is going to be based upon a television remote control or tv remote And you may think, has he run out of ideas now? Now he's just picking up random objects from his house and just trying to like turn it into a recording. No. Or maybe. This is going to be a recording with the, the motorbike in the background. Lovely. So this is recording during the day. Doesn't need to be quiet. You don't need it to be quiet to do this record, to listen to this, or to do the exercise either, <clears throat> which is handy because of that motorbike person. <sighs> so here we go. The point behind this, so with hypnosis, NLP, visualization, you can set up a kind of a, a control center in your mind. And it's not really setting up because we already have a control center in our mind. Um, usually it's a case of just we think about something and then, you know, we get those feelings. So, for example, if you say if you've got a grandchild or, you know, I'm not, I'm not aiming this specifically at people that are in their 50s and 60s and 70s. I'm saying if... If there's someone very special to you in your life and you think about them and you feel nice, you feel, I don't know, warm and fuzzy inside or whatever the feeling, whatever you would describe the feeling as, uh, love, I guess. Um, then by thinking about that person, that little baby or that loved one, your partner, your grandparents, um, whoever, you're kind of commanding or asking the control center to give you those feelings. And I think we do it in the other way as well. Possibly, you know, um, there's a degree of comfort in feeling crappy and uh, being angry. And there's, for some reason, there is a comfort in that. But it's not healthy and it's not, always useful but sometimes it can be useful you know maybe as a I don't know I suppose if someone's needing to end a relationship with somebody that's been hurting them then getting in touch with their anger and the whatever perhaps would be useful in that situation to help them to take action or for someone that's not happy with their finances or their job to manage to get enough uh, of that energy to make changes again. So it can be used for a good result or to make changes. But that's not really what this, this podcast is about. It's... Uh, this is about realizing that we've already got that control center. It's already there in our mind. 
And what I've got in my hand is my remote control for my television. And it's a physical thing. I haven't got to visualise anything. I can see it. I haven't got to close my eyes. I haven't got to visualise... Because you can visualise in your mind a control, a lever that can move down, buttons that you can press, all that kind of stuff. And it's pretty good. A lot of fun. Or you can actually just look at something that's already there. No visualisation needed. All you need is belief and trust in that object to do what it's supposed to do. Now, I know that this remote control does what it's supposed to do because I watch way too much television to have not have used this remote many, many times. Probably, I don't know. I can't imagine how many times I've pressed these buttons over the years. So I've had this TV for over four years now. So yeah, quite a few thousand times these buttons have been pressed and they always do the job. If I've got the TV on, I press number one, goes to BBC One. If I press number five, channel five. It's not going to go to a different channel. It will always go to the channel I ask it to. If I put in um, 732, 732, it will take me to LBC Radio. I think 24 is ITV4. I've only got a few in my head that I remember as far as like further down the, the line of numbers. Usually I just skim through. If it's not in the first five... Then I just saw, but I've got a few that I remember offhand. I've got a friend who just memorised all of them. He can skip between different channels just by putting in the numbers. But I've not uh, bothered with that. So I know that this remote control works. I trust it. It's going to work. It's going to do what I tell it to do. If the if the TV's off at the moment, but if I press the the red button at the top on the right hand side it would turn the TV on. That's it. The button on the left-hand side at the top will turn it over for me to the option to put it onto uh, another channel, like another... Uh, is a USB stick so I could move over to Sky TV or to... Uh, I guess if I had a DVD player, which I don't, I could move it to that. I'm not going to go through every single button on the on the remote control because I promise it's going to be a shorter uh, recording. But I know when I press the button, it's the volume button. If I press plus plus, the volume's going to go up. If I press the minus one at the bottom, the volume's going to go down. Every single time, without fail, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. Because it's going to happen. Just like I believe it's going to get dark later on today. And then it's going to get light again. I believe that because it's going to happen. And nothing that anyone says is going to make any difference to that. That is a solid belief that I have. And I know that it's true. And I know that when I press the one button on this, if the TV's on, the television will go to BBC One. I know if I press the plus button for the volume, it will go up. If I press the minus button, the volume will go down. I know this for fact. And you know this for fact as well. I mean, I'm not talking about my remote, but you, you know, I'm sure you've got a remote control for your television. If you haven't got a television set, then I'm pretty sure you have had one in the past. But you possibly have a remote control for something else, unless everything is... Uh, voice controlled or you know so but most people will have a remote control of some kind whether it's for the telly whether it's for uh, sky whether it's for your internet television you know whatever it is that you got 
I've got quite a few different remotes. Um, I've got one for yeah, one for the Sky TV, one for the normal TV. I've got one for Now TV. You know, so but I only use two of them at a time. And you may be thinking, yeah, what's this got to do with anything? Well, what this has got to do with is you connect your belief and you really believe that something's going to happen. And when it's, when you believe it, it does. Okay. Um, and I know that you could say, well, yeah, the TV is going to work because that's, it's set up to. But it's the same as us. When we expect something and we believe that we're going to feel a certain way, we really believe it, then that's as certain as pressing the volume button on a television set. It's going to happen. So, for example, if someone really believes that they're going to feel anxious as soon as they uh, get off the bus or get on the bus or, you know, set, set foot into a supermarket, if they really, really believe that they're going to get anxious, then they will. You know, because it's an undeniable fact to them. And you can't, argue, you know, it's, you, nothing can really, it can, you can intervene with that. But when something's such a fact to someone, it's hard to change it, in the moment at least. So what we do, what I'm thinking about is... There are ways of changing it, but how about looking at ways that we can actually set up that's so hardwired that that can't be changed easily? But we set it up ourselves. We set it up ourselves. We purposely set up that connection between thinking something and feeling it. Thinking something and feeling it. Every single time it works. Every single time. Now you can set it up in a negative way or a positive way. Of course, I'm going to focus on the positive. And the only scenario I can imagine where being a negative would be, would be, I think if I was... Again, I'm not. But if I was going to train someone, a boxer, and I would, I would set them up to have every to absolutely hate their opponent, to still keep the skill, but to actually want to destroy that person, and put every single negative thing onto the other person so that the boxer would or the cage fight or whatever would not be able to lose mentally so, so mentally they're, they're, they can't lose physically of course it's, it's a different thing but you can't control the physical stuff but the mental stuff can control the physical stuff as well because the person won't feel the pain I know this isn't a boxing nothing to do with boxing but that's kind of part of what I would probably do to get that person to... So if, if Frank Bruno, when he went into with Mike Tyson, I would have got Frank Bruno to absolutely want to kill Tyson, like really destroy him, as if he'd hurt his own mum. You know, if hurt, something like that, really extreme. Um, that's, that would be a negative thing. That could be used for a positive, but afterwards I'd have to sort of say, now, <laughs> sit down, Frank. You know, you've won the world title, that's fine. Now, because Frank Bruno was a machine, he was huge. No one could beat him, not really, if he if he really went for it. He just, he was just, for me, too nice. Uh, he still won a world title, but he was, he wasn't... Um, he didn't have the killer instinct in the ring. Like if you hurt someone, he'd stand back instead of going in and just finishing it sometimes. 
which was, you know, it just shows that he's a lovely, a lovely man um, and brilliant. Anyway, I won't talk about boxing because it's not about boxing. But you can use it for negative. And I guess that doesn't, doesn't the army do that in a way? gets people to get to a point where they can do something that they would never normally do without questioning it. Some could call it brainwashing, you know, but so what we do here, what I'm thinking about doing here is in a positive way. So I'm not talking about brainwashing in a positive way. I'm talking about setting up those connections of belief in a positive way. So, you've got this remote control. You look at it. So I'd like you to, if you, I should have said at the beginning, get your remote control for your TV. Press the pause button. Go and get your remote control. Come back and hold it in your hand. And then press the play button again. I'll keep quiet for 10 seconds. I'm not really going to keep quiet. I'm going to keep talking. They're taking ages, aren't they? You'd think they'd be ready. You'd think they'd be prepared, wouldn't you? I mean, I mean, it's the, the title is remote control. I mean, you know, I've been talking about it. You'd think that. Hello, yeah, hi, welcome, welcome back. So, if you look at the remote control, you can see the volume button. Now, on a computer system, a computer, uh, a PC, laptop, you can change the keyboard settings so that you can set up shortcuts on the keyboard which suits you so if someone is let's say an accountant and they're using a certain software which is continuously needing to use certain buttons which would have to go and like press two two keys at the same time normally so they set it up so they just press one key then that would, you know, it makes sense. So what we can do is you can do the same thing with the remote control. You can change the settings so that you can connect something. You can connect the volume button, like the plus and the minus. You can connect that to your stress levels anxiety levels connecting it like actually if you look at those buttons really connect it know that you know that when you press the plus button the volume goes up you know that when you press the minus button the volume goes down so i want you to what i want you to do actually is you haven't got to close your eyes for this either because I think everyone knows you you don't have to have your eyes closed in order to feel stressed. You know, so why should you have to have your eyes closed in order to have that stress reduced? It's not necessary. It can be useful and it can it can help to to concentrate, I guess. But at the same time, it don't have to. Because you can't stand in a supermarket with your eyes closed without someone asking you if you're okay. And um, some people can't physically stand there with their eyes closed because it's a bit of a weird thing to do, you know, like balance wise for some people. So we can have our eyes open for this because you're looking at the screen. That plus button increases stress and anxiety. The Minus button, and you might not have a minus button, whatever it's equivalent. So the button you press to increase the volume of the television, now connected to increasing your anxiety and stress, and the button that you press to reduce the volume of the television is now connected to reducing your anxiety and stress. You might have some fancy dingle-dongle remote control that's all lit up I don't know I've never seen one but you might have one that actually gives you the numbers of how high it's going and some TVs have that don't they you press the volume up and it, it does on one actually it comes up to I think 
I don't ever go above 20. Now, you can imagine that in your head, if you want. You can imagine that on your mind, or you can even imagine that on your TV screen. Now, the TV's off, so when the TV's off, this remote control is solely for you. It's got nothing to do with television anymore. It's not connected to the television. It's connected to you. So the volume button, the plus, you know, that increases volume is now connected to increasing your stress and anxiety. The reduction, you know, volume reduction button is now connected to you reducing your stress and anxiety. And you might say, why would I want a plus for that? Why would I want to increase it? That's a good question. And I'm not going to tell you. (laughs) No, It's a good question, but you know what? Some people say, oh, I can't control anything. I can't change anything. And there's a way to prove that we can control it. There's a way to prove that we can change how it feels. Now, if you've been listening to me for a while, you've already... Um, maybe discovered some of the ways that I've proposed and also your own ways. Because your your brain is capable of coming up with just as many, if maybe more, ideas than I do for how you personally can feel better within yourself and reduce that anxiety and feel more relaxed. You're the only person in this whole planet the whole universe that knows yourself. Anyone that says, oh, I know you better than you know yourself, is just, they don't. What they can know is your blind spots. Because we can't, they're blind spots for a reason. We can't necessarily see them. So they might be able to see the blind spots. And and some people are really lovely because I like to point out the blind spots, especially in a critical way. How lovely of them. But no one knows you the way that you know yourself. No one knows what makes you tick. No one knows what makes you excited. That gives you that feeling inside. No one knows how it feels. Because, okay, maybe... I don't know how many people will be listening to this, but even if there was millions of people listening to this over the next few years, not one of those people feel the same way that you do. And they never will, because we all feel different. It's not just about the feeling, it's about the the emotional response to the feeling. The feeling of uh, anxiety could just be a simple... Uh, fluttering of the stomach, a tightness of the chest, a bit of like feeling a bit weird in your legs. You know, I've had all that kind of thing tingling in my hands. You know, it's not just the physical stuff. It's it's the reaction. It's the... And you know what? Let's be real. Why wouldn't you react to that? Of course you're going to react. You lived in your own body since you was a little baby. Before you was even a baby, really. Although, depends how you see it. But when you was a fetus, which is a weird name, you've been inside your body. You've ex- you experienced every single emotion and feeling since the existence of your existence from the very beginning. No one else knows what it's like to be you. So when you have a feeling that's unusual... It's going to grab your attention. It's it's auto, It's natural. You know, I remember once I had I was walking with my friend in London during my really bad anxiety times, and my legs went numb. My legs went numb. That's never happened before or since. Scared the crap out of me. Scared the it, honestly it did, and even though I was halfway through a two-year period of 
um, anxiety and panic attacks, like real intense. I still couldn't figure it out because it, it was different from what I'd had before. You know, I was starting to think, well, there must be something wrong with me. Have I got MS? Have I got some kind of neurological disease? You know, everything was kind of going through my mind, as well as the panic. So actually, to be concerned about your own health and the feeling that's inside your body is natural. So I would say, don't give yourself crap over it. Don't beat yourself up over actually caring about yourself. Because that's part of the anxiety and the panic. It's because you care about yourself that you're taking notice. And then that care, that concern, turns into worry, turns into panic and anxiety. You know, it turns into more. But it's because you care about yourself. So when we start having a go at ourselves, oh, why do I keep having this... uh, so we're kind of going from caring about ourselves to being horrible to ourselves, for caring about ourselves. So maybe give yourself a little bit of a break. And maybe, perhaps, 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 show yourself a bit of love for the simple fact that you do care about yourself enough to step back and say, oh, what's going on here? Because think about it. If someone's um, driving a car and they start feeling a bit weird in the head, I'm not talking about anxiety, I'm talking about it could be anything, yeah? They could. What's the right thing for that person to do? Continue driving down the motorway or pull up at the first time, the first stop they can? You know, if they were feeling dizzy or feeling a bit breathless, what should they do? Keep driving or pull up at the first opportunity. Now, some people would automatically carry on driving. So maybe they're not even caring about themselves if they continue to drive, or perhaps the people in the car with them, you know, and the other road users. So by caring, enough to check out what's going on with them and probably most you know most times it will be nothing it'll just be could be a bit of gas a bit of indigestion maybe just a bit tired it could be lots of different things too much sugar you know but to care enough so you know people with anxiety and panic that have issues with that we show that we care enough about ourselves to stop what we're doing and to notice it and to observe it and to recognize that that stuff's going on. So that's probably a completely different recording, but I thought it was important to say it because, you know, you might not hear it from other people, but I'll tell it to you. You're doing really well. Regardless of where you are, on this journey of anxiety, stress, whether, wherever you are. The fact that you're actually recognizing it, acknowledging, means that you're way further than the average person. Because most people just ignore stuff like this. Just fight through, stiff up a lip, just ignore it. Well, I don't know about you, but I try to ignore it. Anxiety does not like being ignored. And so by giving it the attention, you acknowledge it. But then you can start. It's also like, I guess, like making friends with it, in a, in a sense. Which might seem a bit weird. But you know what? If you had to spend three months in a prison cell... Um, and the person in your prison cell was the complete opposite to you. You know, that person might be a uh, horror, you know, really racist, homophobic, uh, re- you know what I mean, whatever. It might be the most dis- 
despicable person you've ever met in your life. Now, regardless of that, you'd better make friends with them if you're going to spend the next three months sleeping in that cell with them. I know that's an extreme situation, but, you know, to survive that situation, you have to make friends with them. And anxiety is way, I mean, that, that situation is probably way worse than I can imagine, one of the worst situations I can imagine happening for most people. So you've got this remote control, but you're wondering when is he going to come back and talk about the remote control. But just remember, you're doing well. You're doing your best, you're doing well. And it might not mean anything coming from me, but say it to yourself at least. Remind yourself that you're doing well. Okay? The remote control. So I want you to do, you now know that the remote control is connected to the anxiety and stress levels. Uh, press the volume button up, you know, for higher, low for lower. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I want you to get in touch with where it is now. And I realised that it's probably going to be lower than what it was before. Because if you're used to listening to me, at least, you connect in the same way that we're connecting the remote control volume to the levels of anxiety and stress that you'd be feeling now. You would, so it's kind of natural to connect my voice and these recordings, this podcast, pressing the play button even, or even thinking about sort of listening to feeling more relaxed. So I get that, that's one of the, the side effects of listening to these recordings. I mean, you haven't even got to like me as a person. It's, it's a case of how you feel. I mean, not everything I say is going to be useful or maybe even relevant. But it doesn't stop me saying it. it. doesn't stop me saying it, though, does it? Nothing stops me from talking. So I'm doing this, this podcast genuinely out of trying to help people that have been in a situation or that are in a situation that I've been in and sometimes still get in. So, you know, I've, I don't know what it's like to be you. And you'll never, you know, we'll never know what it's like to be each other. You don't know what it's like to be me. I don't know what it's like to be you. But I do know what it's like to have my life. Now, I know what it's like for me to have my life, feel like my life is controlled by anxiety and stress. And in fact, I felt like my life was ruined by it. It wasn't, but at the time, that's how I felt. So, you got the remote control. He keeps coming back to the remote control. I thought we said this was going to be a short session. It's 35 minutes in. Okay, you got the remote control. Focus on whatever stress or anxiety you can get hold of. Just, just get in touch with it. It's not going to be difficult. Well, maybe it is difficult. Maybe it's, it's hard to get in touch with it, but... There's a there's an emotion, there's feelings there. The the one thing about being uh, dealing with emotions like uh, you know stress and anxiety is that we get more in touch with how we feel as people, as humans. We're not as blocked, not as uptight. Things flow a bit freer. We're more in tune. It's more we're more mindful. And I truly believe that. You know, I think someone that's had, you can go do meditation for years and years and years, which is really good for anxiety, by the way. But you can also, someone that's 
going through anxiety and stress, they it might be the first time that they've actually really felt their body because they've kind of had no choice. And to realise that the mind and the body are the same, they're connected. They're different, but there's you know it's still the same thing. But it's it's to have that feeling in your body when perhaps you've lived your life inside your mind. Uh, maybe an academic, or just uh, lived your life based on whatever emotional pleasure you can get, which is how a lot of people do live, including myself, uh, quite a lot of the time. Well, sometimes. So, you've got this remote control. What I want you to do is look at it, knowing that that's the connection. The louder volume is for increasing the anxiety and stress. The lower volume is for decreasing it. I want you to press the increase first, which goes against what you would imagine that I would want to do. But I'm talking minimally okay so notice what level you would give it in your mind you can see a number in your mind if you want or you can just sort of gauge it from your own personal experience and physical feeling so perhaps you know out of a hundred zero to a hundred because i don't think it one to ten isn't really that valid i don't think sometimes with something like stress so you go from zero to a hundred. Where would you put it at the moment? Would it be half? Would it be a quarter? Would it be would it be twenty percent? Would it be twenty? Would it be fifteen? You know, whatever it is. Um, all I'm going to do is ask you to press the the volume button, the you know the increase volume button. The plus sign, if it's if you've got one on your remote, and actually press it physically, press it. Just press it, just a little bit, once. Press it once, and then press it again, and just notice how that feeling increases a bit. It's a little bit more uncomfortable, but not too much. But you can feel it, and press it again, just a little bit. Just press it once, and just feel that that feeling of discomfort increase. And now press the opposite, so the the down button. And just notice how it decreases. And only press that three times. So it's gone down below what it was now. Now I want you to increase it again. Just press it twice for increasing. One to and it feels uncomfortable and press it down again press the volume down and just you can feel you can feel it physically i've actually got my eyes closed while i do this but i can feel the physical relaxation now the first thing that this proves is or the first thing that this disproves is the idea that we can't control it you just prove that you can we can control the volume of it, the level of it. So we can press the down button again a bit more. We press it once and just notice. I mean, I can feel the feeling, the pressure of my thumb. So I'm using my thumb to do it. I mean, you might use your finger, but I don't know. I don't want to use both hands. I can't. Well. You do whatever you want to do. So I'm pressing that. I feel the pressure on my thumb of the button. And it's almost like it's connected to my nervous system. I can actually feel it in my spine. Which on some level feel like, why? But then remembering that the spine is what connects the body to the brain. You know, the feelings. So... That's how we manage to send relaxation feelings from the brain into the body. Without a spine, it wouldn't be possible. So it just sends those feelings down. 
So you might want to press the button again, but wait a minute, just notice what it is. What is it on the scale? What's it gone down to? And I guess, you know, it's, there might be a part of you thinking, you know what, I wonder if I keep pressing it, how relaxed will I get? Will I fall asleep? That's a possibility, I don't know. It's going to be different for everybody. The more you do it, the more it works, the more, you know. Um, ideally, you know, don't do it when the television's on because otherwise the volume's going to keep going up and down. And if you kind of move it around. But it's an exploration. Because by raising it, which it goes against what you would naturally do, you start to realise that, oh, first of all, you've gone into a room that you were scared to go into. But the more you go into it, you realise that room's not scary. It just needs a light bulb. Put a light bulb in. Yeah, it's still a little bit scary, but it's not as scary. It needs a bit of cleaning up. Got to get rid of all the, the dust and the, the spider's webs and the, you know, the dirt. Maybe some of that old, scary-looking furniture. Get rid of that. And then you go in again and... Well, it's not scary anymore, but it's not, it's not pleasant. It's, uh, it's a bit of a stain. It's left a bit of a stain. You know, it's a... Uh, it doesn't fit with the other rooms. doesn't fit with how you feel when you're feeling okay. doesn't feel comfortable. So then you can do something with that room. You can change the room. Put in, you know, redecorate it. Put in anything you want. Lovely sofa, big TV if you want, stereo system, carpet, fireplace, whatever you want in that room. To turn it from being an uncomfortable, scary, horrible place to being a comfortable, really, really comfortable, nice place. It could end up being nicer than the rooms you had before, but you, and you're sitting in there in the future, completely forgotten that at one point that was a place that you absolutely uh, were terrified of. But it doesn't, it, you, can't, you can't be now. I'll give you an example of that. When I first moved in here, my friend had a ferret. My friend downstairs had a ferret. I was terrified of it. Yeah, I was, honestly. It moved so quick, sharp teeth. It was looked like it kept trying to want to bite me. Um, constantly, it just, it, I didn't like it. I didn't hate it, but I was scared of it. Over time, I got a little bit used to it, but still, you know, still not really sure. And then I got Andre, a little baby ferret. You know, he's, he's almost my best friend. He's my son. And there's not one, one part of me that's scared of him at all. And he, he could send me to hospital if he bit me. He could bite right through the bone, crush my finger. I could, you know, he wouldn't. But I've got no fear of him at all. And I know it's, it's like, well, obviously you're not scared of him because he's your little boy. But before I had him, I was scared of ferrets. And when I first had him, all he wanted to do was kill me. Seriously, he kept trying to bite me really hard. He didn't like me at all. And then one day he climbed up on me um, while I was watching telly and he climbed up my uh, what's it, dressing gown. He, he climbed up the dressing gown sleeve and he went to sleep. And from then on, we were cool. But before that, he didn't want anything to do with me. So the fact that he climbed up in my dressing gown and he was there for about three or four hours to sleep. I was literally, I was, I was going to the toilet 
with hold, holding my hand up while I was doing a wee, holding my arm up so he didn't fall into the toilet. Because I suddenly felt comfortable and that thing that was scary is no longer scary. Another example, I've always been scared of snakes all my life. My friend found a little snake yesterday or a couple of days ago. I looked at it and I wasn't scared of it. It's the first time, and I, I didn't touch it, I'll be honest, um, but touching snakes was never really the issue, just snakes in themselves. And I looked at it, such a cute little face, with little tongue sticking out. That's one of the things I like about Andre, is when he's asleep, his tongue sticks out. So cute. And I'm talking my, you know, I've had a proper fear of snakes all my life, really strong. And for some reason, I didn't feel scared at all. I used to be scared of spiders when I was a kid, a proper, you know, real full on. Now, I have spiders running around here sometimes, I don't care. They do their thing, I do my thing. They catch the flies. I make recordings talking about how they catch the flies. So yeah. I suppose the point is things change. And the idea that I'm always going to be this way is not true. It's not true. We're always changing. Which is... I think it's quite amazing, really. So, with your, with your remote control, I want you to press the reduce button again. Just notice where it is first, and then on the scale of 0 to 100, or 100 to 0, notice where it is on that scale, the anxiety, stress, and then press the... I mean, I realise it might be difficult to actually get hold of any kind of anxiety or stress. There's going to be some people listening to this thinking, I want to do this technique... Jason, I really do. I've got the remote control in my hand. And by the way, I was listening. I've listened when, when you were going on about how I should have had it already. So that was a bit rude. And um, I don't have any level of stress or anxiety right now. It just seems to be unavailable. It's... It's almost like the internet sometimes, you know, it just cuts off and cannot connect. What shall I do? We don't have to do anything. I mean, in a sense, if just listening to me blabber on about a technique, even if you don't use a technique, if listening to me, listen to me makes that change. Uh, changes how you feel then that's a that's a good that's a good result I guess isn't it it's a side effect to this as far as side effects go that's not too bad it's not too shabby I know I said this was going to be a short recording and there's something that if I think of an idea I almost feel like I need to tell you. And there's more to just, I could just come on and say, and I have done, just here's a technique, you've got your remote control, the volume button, the, the, the plus increases attention, the lower one increases, decreases attention. Uh, do that, do that, do that, that. Yeah, there you go, bye. Now, I could have done that, obviously a bit more skillful than that. But at the same time, I want to be a human being with you. I don't want to put on the idea that I'm some kind of you know, special uh, expert on anything. So I'm not an expert on anything. Um, myself, I guess. The only thing I'm an expert on is me. And even then I've got, as I said earlier, we've got blind spots that I'm not aware of. I mean, I only found out I've got a bald spot. 
uh, last year when I was filming myself and I bent over to pick Andre up. I didn't know I had a bald spot. Why didn't anyone tell me? People love to tell you about their blind spots. Uh, did you know that you're quite sarcastic at times and a bit of passive aggression? Did you realise that? Now, I'd like to tell you about that. Tell me about my bald spot. I've been walking around like I had a full head of hair, like I was hairy. Oh no, I got a bald spot on the. Is it the crown of the head at the back? Seriously, it's 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 not bald, but it's balding. It's you know, it's not quite um. Not it's not quite Prince William. Not quite not there, and it might never get that that thin, but it might, you know. It's really, and so there, I suppose if I do, I'll be royal. I'll be kind of, because you think Prince William will be the king one day, and he's he'll, he's going to be sort of bald, which means brilliant. Why not? If it's, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me, your majesty. So that will be weird. I have a bald, bald, I'll have a comb over, I think. I do that sometimes. I actually shave my head. So I can't really moan about being bald because I've been shaving my head for about 16 years. No, 18 years. And um, But I do let it grow as well. But sometimes I shave it and I shave right down the middle first and then I, I'll put my hair over and I do a comb over <laughs> just for fun. I don't know, it just it tickles me. To see what I'd look like with a comb over. And sometimes I do some weird stuff with my moustache as well. Which I won't go into. But it's... it's uh, <laughs> I don't know. It amuses me anyway. So... I hope that this is useful. I guess... It... Yeah, I do. Genuinely. There's loads of different ways. And maybe we can test it again. Test it again uh, with the remote. Because this is a physical thing that you've got in your hand that you can use at home. And you can, if you wanted to, take the remote control out with you. Be careful you don't lose it, though. Because, you know, you need it for your TV. But you could connect it to your phone. Because you can set up a TV control on your telephone on a, a smartphone. There's remote control apps on there. Or you could just connect your phone, you know, in your mind, the buttons on your phone, the volume up and down on your phone to change those feelings. So, you know, put them up, then take them down, raise them, then decrease to the point that you know actually, oh, you do have control over how you feel. And it's not about controlling how you feel. But you do have control. You do have the ability to control it. Which then when you, if you say to yourself, and we all do at times, oh, I can't help this, I've got no, no control over this. It's, it's not true. It's never been true. It just feels like that at times. And I felt like I've, I've done that. I still say it sometimes. But then I have to remind myself this. It's not true. How can I be saying this on a recording? And I've been saying this for many years online. In many different recordings over the last 14 years, 15 years. Perhaps I should start reminding myself, you know. It's like, wait a minute. You can control yourself without being controlling. And I think that's one of the things that used to bug me because I don't like being controlled. I don't like other people telling me what to do. That's why I don't tell anyone what to do. I don't do um, that kind of hypnosis where people like do this, do that, do that, you know. Um, I offer suggestions. I ask if you want to do it. But I don't, you know, I'm not, con I'm not trying to control anybody. And I don't like being controlled. And in the same way, I don't want to tell myself what to do either. There's, there's, there's a little bit of a... Um, I don't know how to explain this. It. 
there's yeah it's definitely an aversion to that an aversion to even me <laughs> me telling myself it's an old Andrew Dice joke Andrew Dice Clay joke from the early 80s or late 80s um, no one tells me what to do not even me it's that kind of I don't like being told what to do and I don't even want to tell myself what to do because then I react but in this situation you're not telling yourself what to do you're requesting it you're expecting it just like when you press the remote control on a TV you're not telling it to go to BBC One you're just pressing a button because you don't want to have to telling it to go to be, to, to a different channel or be getting up like in the old days and pressing a button on the television set. There's going to be a lot of people that may not even know that that existed, but there was a time where remote controls did not exist. There was a, there was a time when remote controls had a lead to them that connected to the television and there was a time when there was no remote control at all, where you had to go and press a button. Um, so when I pressed the button on remote control to go to 732 LPC radio, I'm not, I'm not telling it to do anything. I'm just expecting it to do it. I just press 732. There is no emotion connected. There's no... It's just I'm expecting it to happen. It's like pressing a, a, a light switch. I just expect, I expect the light to come on. I turn the tap, I expect water to come out of the tap. I don't give it any thought, really. I just expect it. Just in the same way as now you've got those buttons connected. The volume button to go up, or the volume button to go down. The down button can release tensions and anxiety. Not because you want, well, you expect it to happen. You're not telling yourself what to do, you're just expecting it. You're assuming it's going to happen because in the same way as you expect it to get dark at night and to be light in, in the morning, you know, the next day. And when you listen to my recordings, you expect Horace the Pigeon to turn up at some point and start going <laughs> on my uh, kitchen windowsill for some reason. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been useful, even, you know, parts of it. And remember... Remember, for two things. Remember what I said earlier. You're doing really well. You know, give yourself a break. Start maybe celebrating your accomplishments. So be kind to yourself. Really, be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.